Joining us now is Shweta Shakaborty. She's a risk and behavioral scientist on climate. You and I have spoke many, many times on climate. And first, I'd like to get your biggest takeaways so far from this climate summit, especially now that the U.S. has re-engaged on the global stage when it comes to climate change. You know, it's really showing John Kerry taking this presidential envoy on climate change title very seriously. And he's approaching the rest of the world with humility and saying we're not ignoring what these last four years meant for urgent climate action that we need at a global scale. But that doesn't mean that the spirit of the American people at lower levels from the federal government, I mean the state level, community level, the mayors who represent the municipalities, that never was lost. Those, at, at those levels, there was still adamant and urgent action being taken around following the Paris Accords that the United States had been in up until the previous administration. And now, just days after the inauguration, it's already been reinstated, the rejoining of the Paris Accords. And this is a 100 degree turn from what was happening prior in terms of the U.S. leading climate action. So this is really a signal being sent that the U.S. recognizes the lack of leadership but is going to make up for those four years, and the spirit of the American people is supporting it and behind it. So we saw those executive actions, as you mentioned, to join Paris by the Biden administration. But what do you think uh, we can expect in terms of more immediate actions? What else can we look forward to? Oh, there's a lot still coming, which is really exciting. If we keep an eye on what's already been done, which is not just obviously rejoining the Paris Accords, but revoking the permit for the Keystone Pipeline, which carries crude oil from Canada to the U.S., also this moratorium on oil and gas drilling and development in the Arctic Wildlife Refuge, and um, just the dozens of regulations that are under review that were supporting fossil fuels. And all of that and more is being looked at from the Climate Dream Team, whether it's domestically from the climate czar, Gina McCarthy, who was the former administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency in the United States, and to John Kerry, who is now already, as of Monday of this week, speaking to international audiences of what to anticipate around the U.S., a big part of that being a breakdown of silos between talking about climate action and the oceans. Because for too long, these two things were kept separate, but they are so mutually reinforcing. We cannot protect the oceans and ignore climate change and vice versa. They really do reinforce each other. So you're seeing a real, a real strength behind the words of the uh, climate platform that Biden's administration put forward before election and now within days into his administration. And I know that you saw this new report that uh, says that the Earth is losing 1.2 trillion tons of ice a year, and that is just the beginning. 2020, uh, as we know, saw record hurricanes, wildfires, and John Kerry is already saying that the Paris Climate Agreement isn't enough. Just your reaction to some of these new numbers. It's really terrifying, and Kerry has made it very clear that we need to, at a global scale, uh, reduce coal um, emissions five times what we're doing now. We need to plant trees so we can find uh, we can get some negative cooling effects happening to try and reverse some of the emissions as well. And we need to improve that five times over. We need to move to electrification of um, of, of automobiles. 22 times what we're doing now. So there's a lot of work to be done because even with the nationally determined contributions, the NDCs, as we refer to them, that all the countries who have signed on to the Paris Accords have committed to, if we look at where they, what these commitments are and where countries are in actually implementing them, we are still on track to 3.7 degrees minimum warning, warming by the end of the century, maximum 4.5 and maybe beyond that. That's an uninhabitable uninhabitable planet for our grandchildren. So we really have to veer off those numbers. And there's a lot of work to be done at the global level and, of course, within countries as well. All right. Great to hear your take, as always, Shweta Chakraborty. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.